flux, friend or foe. <laughs> Hey guys, George's Soundtracks here. This week we're going to touch briefly on Flux and what the Flux actually does and whether it's friendly or can it be a foe. So what Flux does is it actually, when it heats up, it cleans off the oxidation off the metal surface. What that does is that allows the solder to properly adhere to the metal surface that you're soldering to. Now, there are different types of Flux for different jobs depending on what you're doing. So a lot of times there are different types of metals. So say for example, if we're in the hobby industry, we're doing brass model building. Well, brass model building, brass tends to tarnish and oxidize pretty heavily a lot faster than other metals. And so therefore, the flux that you typically would use, a brand named Tix is a really common one to use in the hobby industry. When you're working on brass model building, the Tix flux has a higher acidic nature to it or a ratio. And what it does is it actually cleans off that oxidation off the brass so that when you're soldering two pieces of brass together, you get a better connection. Now, there are other things in the industry, uh, such as pipe flux. And you can get this typically at your local hardware big box store that you go to around the corner. And they have flux that's primarily designed for work on pipes. Now, pipes, as you can imagine, are a lot of steel and iron and every other heavy metal that tends to oxidize pretty heavily. And so therefore that acid needs to be pretty high in those compounded fluxes to make sure that that metal surface is cleaned off when they're doing the pipe sweating. Now the problem with all of this is that when we start working on our delicate electronics that are on the decoders, those high acid content can attack the components on the decoder. And in many times cause random parts failures. For example, on our modern TSU PNP, at the front of the decoder here, you can actually see some components right up against the metal tabs. Now these parts are actually used for the DCC interface. And what it's doing is it's reading the DCC signal as well as using the power to power the decoder. But if these components become failed or damaged because of the flux that flows onto them, what can happen is if you put the decoder on your programming track where the decoder stays quiet, if you hear sound come on, it's just because the decoder can't tell what the protocol is because the DCC interface is damaged. And so therefore, you have to send the decoder back for replacement. Now, one thing you may be able to get away with in some cases, if the flux damage has not been, da been too bad, or maybe it's happened fairly quickly, get some rubbing alcohol and a toothbrush and just brush off the the decoder gently. You don't want to scrub too hard because you can pull parts off of it, but you want to brush it with some rubbing alcohol gently to clean off any additional residue flux or anything like that that can be causing problems. Now, a lot of questions we get is what type of flux do I find then, George? Well, this particular one here we use in-house. This is made by Alpha Metals and the part number is OM338. Now, this flux is a fairly expensive one. This is a commercial grade, and it's a no-clean flux. So when it burns, it doesn't leave any residue behind. Now, one of the other fluxes that I use primarily at home, you can get fairly easily. This is stuff we buy from DigiKey. It's called ChipQuick. And the part number for the ChipQuick is listed right here in this picture. I believe it's SMD1195. Double check that with the picture. But you can buy this at digikey.com, search chip quick and the part number, and you should be able to find it fairly quickly. It comes in a syringe similar to the one you see here for about $12 or $13 a tube, and you can get a couple of them. But doing small work on these uh, decoders, you're not using a whole lot of flux. Now, one of the advantages I love using about the syringe is because when we're applying it, we can really make sure that we're applying a very precise amount. So when I'm applying this, I can put just enough flux to cover the joint, just like that. Now when I make my joint, the pad is completely covered, and so the flux will now clean the pad off, completely deoxidize it, and allow the solder to flow onto the circuit board and into that connection more smoothly. For more information on soldering in general and some other tips and hints, I recommend you watch webinar number eight linked in the description below. This is a full tutorial webinar that we did live online 
with teaching you how to solder and some cool tips and techniques of what soldering is and how to make it best for your models. Now this includes different aspects of soldering to decoders, whether it be through hole components, wire to wire, or soldering to circuit boards. So I highly recommend you check that out. Now also we have a short video for beginners done by our marketing specialist, Mackenzie, and she went through and did a quick little tutorial on soldering, and you can also see the link in the description below. So for more information, please visit our website at soundtracks.com. Be sure to check out the user's guide and all the cool things that our Tsunami 2 can do. There's also a document there called the installation guide, which will help guide you through, including wire diagrams for each of the current Tsunami 2 and Economy products, so that in case you lost that instruction packet, you can see which wire goes where, or which pad does what purpose. Also, if you need any help, our support department's here for you.